Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for another look at GPU pricing, and this month it's a particularly exciting one as we enter a new generation of GPU hardware. Nvidia's most powerful GeForce RTX 4090 is on the market right now, so we'll be exploring the impact of that launch in today's video. How is the RTX 4090 selling? What impact has that had on other GPU pricing? And what can we expect from the multitude of graphics card launches that are coming up shortly? As far as the launch of the RTX 4090 is concerned, we had heard from multiple retailers and AIBs ahead of launch that stock for this particular GPU was really strong in comparison to other launches. Nvidia had heard the message loud and clear from the RTX 3090 launch where they did not provide enough supply to meet demand in a normal market, yet alone one inflated due to pandemic gaming demand and the surge in crypto mining. Launch day supply of the RTX 4090 was plentiful and several multiples of what was available back at the launch of Ampere. Despite this, in some regions the RTX 4090 did sell out almost immediately and depending on where you live it remains out of stock. However, I want to stress that this is perfectly normal for a graphics card launch and has occurred for every single major GPU release since, well, as far back as we've been testing these products. For the first couple of weeks, demand typically outstrips supply and then stock begins to settle about two to four weeks later. For really in-demand launches, it can be hard to get a GPU for maybe the first two months, but beyond that, availability tends to improve and cards return to standard MSRP level pricing. What we've heard is that demand for the RTX 4090 has been strong, especially considering global economic conditions right now, where not as many people are able to afford a $1,600 US GPU. Sales have been good, and there don't seem to be many concerns around RTX 4090s piling up. It does seem that gamers are buying them, which I guess makes sense given the largely positive reception. Gamers have proven time and again that they are willing to buy graphics cards in this sort of price range, and the 4090 is no exception. However, this launch is naturally very different to the launch of Ampere, and there are zero concerns about stock and availability looking into the future. Here in Australia, we're sitting a week post-launch, and you can buy an RTX 4090 at several retailers right now if you really want to, which was unheard of at the launch of the RTX 3090. One key factor in this availability is the high local price for the 4090. For most models, they're asking over 3,000 Aussie dollars. And of course, what is helping to keep these models in stock is supply that is far higher in this region than any previous flagship GPU launch. In other regions, we're seeing varied stock levels. We checked several retailers in Europe like Overclockers UK, Mind Factory, Amazon, and saw most models were out of stock with the occasional retailer having one or two models available. Over in the United States, like is typical for most GPU launches, the 4090 is out of stock, unless you want to pay well over the MSRP. We are just one week post-launch though, and we expect to see stronger availability this time next month. There is absolutely no reason to panic buy an RTX 4090 at scalper prices. We just recommend waiting if you are interested in one. And waiting is a good idea anyway, as you probably should see what AMD has in store before making a final purchasing decision. That way you have all the relevant info at your disposal. So how has the RTX 4090's introduction impacted the rest of the GPU market? Well, this is where things start to get interesting. When we look at Nvidia's Ampere lineup, we see an interesting scenario where, on the whole, GPU prices have increased since last month, but only by a few percent, with most of the damage occurring to just a handful of models. In particular at the high end, stock levels for the RTX 3090 series appear to be falling. There are just fewer options to choose from right now on Newegg, so there aren't as many screaming good deals, though cards are still available well below the MSRP. The RTX 3080 Ti is also less plentiful these days, although pricing has only risen back up to the level in August, so not a huge issue there. What remains very easy to purchase is the RTX 3080, yet despite being two years since launch, the fake $700 MSRP still hasn't materialized, and we're still faced with a $740 asking price in late 2022. Pretty ridiculous stuff. As for the lower parts of Nvidia's lineup, it's a similar story here to prior months where the RTX 3050 and RTX 3060 are also still not available at the MSRP and don't appear to be headed that way anytime soon, with these cards also seeing a small price increase month on month. 
On the whole, Nvidia GPUs rose in price by 3% on average, so the RTX 4090 has effectively done nothing to provide price pressure to the new retail market. This is to be expected though to some degree, as in our review of the 4090, we pointed out its cost per frame value compared to other models at Newegg wasn't that appealing. It's a flagship product after all, with the typical high-end buyer's tax. This really isn't the card to deliver a big price shakeup to the market, and the RTX 4080 16GB with its high $1200 price tag doesn't appear to be that sort of card either. AMD GPUs on the other hand have largely ignored what is happening on the Nvidia side of the market and fell on average by 3% month on month. This is less of a price decline than we saw last month, where prices fell by 7%, but the average has been impacted by a price rise for the RX 6700 XT series. There don't appear to be many supply concerns either, it's still possible to easily find models like the 6900 XT for less than $700, even though this card is now well below MSRP. Pricing for AMD's lower tier models continues to be super aggressive as well. The RX 6600 has fallen to $220 US, and the 6600 XT and 6650 XT are both now below $300, coming in around the mark of Nvidia's RTX 3050. We're not expecting these models to be replaced anytime soon with new RDNA 3 products, so the fact they continue to fall in price is impressive, though I guess not unusual for cards that are a year old. With Nvidia GPUs increasing in price while AMD GPUs fell, this makes for an interesting price tier comparison. The action really begins around the RX 6900 XT, which currently sits between the RTX 3080 and RTX 3070 Ti, as Nvidia still have several models priced well above $750 US. Meanwhile, the 6800 XT is in a head-to-head -head battle with the RTX 3070, the 6800 is undercutting the 3070, and the RX 6700 XT is a very tasty proposition up against the RTX 3060. AMD also has the 6600 XT positioned up against the RTX 3050, and we've shown in the past that this makes the 3050 look rather terrible. On the used market, the price trends we saw for new NVIDIA GPUs have largely been ignored, with a small 3% price drop month on month. The big winner here is anyone interested in an RTX 3060. Those cards are flooding the market right now and are among the best value for people interested in buying used, a 30% discount compared to buying new. On the flip side, I'm not quite sure what is going on with sales for used RTX 3090 Ti models. It makes no sense to spend more on a used GPU than buying that model new when the 3090 Ti is still available at retailers like Newegg. Anyone paying the average price for a used 3090 Ti got burned pretty hard. However, it doesn't seem like there has been any big rush to sell off previous high-end NVIDIA GPUs since the launch of the RTX 4090. Pricing for used RTX 3080s and above has been relatively steady, and while you can get an okay discount compared to buying new, it's nothing earth-shattering. For now at least, the prices of used high-end Ampere GPUs seems more linked to their retail price than the amount of supply. On the AMD side, we saw a similar trend in that used GPU prices slightly outpaced new GPU prices in terms of a reduction month on month. With AMD GPUs being quite attractive on the new market, there aren't too many screaming good deals here, certainly not like the RTX 3060 on the Nvidia side, though the 6600 XT at 25% below new retail price is pretty respectable. The used market also places AMD and Nvidia GPUs into different price battles. On the new market, for example, we see the 3060 compete with the 6700 XT, and the 3070 compete with the 6800 XT. On the used market, the 3060 is a bit better value, slotting between the 6700 XT and 6600 XT. Meanwhile, the 3070 is priced between the RX 6800 and 6700 XT. It seems that the used market is correcting to some degree the price to performance discrepancies we see on the new market, with Nvidia GPUs better value compared to AMD GPUs if you buy used compared to new. Data from the used Turing GPU market paints an interesting picture. The value of the RTX 2080 Ti has fallen sharply by 17% month on month with very healthy supply. Is this what many RTX 4090 buyers are upgrading from? It's hard to say for certain, but it would make a lot of sense given many PC gamers tend to upgrade every second generation, and the RTX 4090 presents a massive performance uplift over the 2080 Ti in a similar high-end flagship category. 
The RTX 2070 also dropped in price by a significant 15% month on month after a smaller drop last month. The G416 series continues to fall in price by a steady amount. We're seeing a 9% drop on average this month, which seems to be keeping up pace with movement in the entry-level new market, particularly on the AMD side. Pascal GPUs also continue to drop by a similar amount, creating a lot of options in the sub $130 market for used GPUs. Price to performance ratios seem to make sense as well, given the GTX 1070 and GTX 1660 Super deliver similar performance and are around that $130 mark at the moment. Though we'd prefer the newer Turing model as it's more likely to receive driver updates into the future. The Radeon RX 5000 series continues to recover from being a highly popular option for crypto miners, with prices for these GPUs cratering over the course of the last few months. This month, it's the 5600 XT and 5500 XT that are the most impacted, with huge drops near 20% month on month. The 5600 XT actually looks reasonable here, given it's much faster than the GTX 1660 series, but is a similar price on the used market. It's also pretty insane that you can now get a used RX 5700 XT for just $10 more than a new RX 6500 XT. And let me tell you, the 5700 XT destroys the 6500 XT in performance and features. Then we get to AMD's older Vega and Polaris GPUs. The RX 590 and RX 580 series appear to have hit a price floor around the $80 to $120 mark this month, despite strong supply. Other models have created in price though. In fact, across the 44 GPUs we've been tracking on the used market, 22 of those now sit below $200 US, which was unthinkable this time last year. It's been interesting to see the impact the RTX 4090's entrance has had on the overall GPU market. Being a high-end option that offers a performance tier previously unheard of, rather than simply screaming good GPU value, I guess it's not a surprise that it hasn't caused a big shift in the status quo. However, I was surprised to see Nvidia GPU prices rise on average, bucking the trend of pretty much every other category we looked at. Across the rest of the market, prices continue to fall at a steady pace with a few outliers and exceptions. It seems that owners of the RTX 2080 Ti are ditching their GPU at a greater than average rate, causing a large drop in prices. NVIDIA GPUs are also looking reasonable on the used market right now, particularly for the RTX 3060 and RTX 3070. Meanwhile, AMD has a strong advantage in the new market for mid-range and entry-level models. They're continuing to be aggressive on price, even though they've been the clear outright value option for several months now. The upcoming months are set to be quite illuminating for a number of reasons. Firstly, we're expecting more GPU launches. We've got at least the RTX 4080 16GB card coming in November, and RDNA 3 GPUs coming at some point as well, plus the potential relaunch of whatever the RTX 4080 12GB becomes. November and December are also typically the biggest months for GPU sales, and this caused a lot of issues last year when prices were still sky high. This year, it appears supply for most models is plentiful, but I guess you never know what might happen. Anyway, that's it for this look at GPU pricing for the month of October. Like we said previously, we're going to be continuing to do these GPU pricing updates as we see more GPU launches because things are still happening in the market. Prices continue to change from you know different categories. Things get more expensive, things get cheaper. So I still think there is some value in providing these updates. If you're interested in supporting the channel and the independent testing we do, we have our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our behind the scenes videos, our monthly live stream, which is coming up soon, and also our wonderful Discord community community where you can chat about all the latest news and things happening in the PC tech space. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.